Hey guys, welcome to Ember Learning Labs Geometry. This is video one, unit one, lesson one. This is actually the only one of my courses, I think, where, I, well, other than middle school ones, that I am not doing uh, several lessons in the review chapters in the book we're working through right now because it's a good place to jump in and we've got a lot to cover. This is actually, theoretically, the course that has the most units that we plan to cover at this point in time i am and all that kind of stuff i won't i won't spend too much time waxing eloquent about that uh in if you're in one of my classes i will let you know more about all of this kind of <coughs> excuse me uh all of this kind of stuff in class and in person and all that kind of stuff if you're joining us just on youtube thanks for joining us and being along for this this journey hopefully this is helpful to you let us down know down in the comments uh, whether these videos are useful to you and what other types of content you want to see and would be useful in math or science or general homeschool knowledge. Uh, so we're going to dive in. And as the title of this lesson is suggests, we're going to talk about points, lines, and planes. In, you know, geometry is is based on, this. this course is essentially based on the really, really foundational work of Euclid, a Greek uh, philosopher and mathematician. And Euclid defined three different, he defined, he defined three different undefined terms. And those terms are, you guessed it, point, line, and plane. Okay. So what are they? How do we represent them in geometry? In geometry, geometry is the most symbol heavy and abbreviation heavy course that I teach. We use a lot of symbols and a lot of abbreviations. So you're going to have to kind of gain those and get those as a part of your working knowledge and get used to those and all those kind of things. Now on a lot of them, um, you can write out the words fully. I actually had a student last year that whenever I would abbreviate something, they would always write it out fully and, and they were able to keep up and do, do just great. Um, and that's totally fine. That's up to you. But I will be using symbols and all those kind of things because I want you to learn that and experience doing it that way. So what are things? So we're going to start with a point. Point is kind of the lowest rock bot. I keep doing A's for O's for some reason in, in all these videos. Um, yeah, a point is kind of the lowest type of thing in geometry and everything is kind of built off of a point, a point. It takes up no space. It is a point, a, you, you, you kind of have to define a point by using the word point, which is kind of tricky, right? It doesn't have a point doesn't have any slope. It doesn't have any doesn't have any space. It just exists. Now we represent a point with something that does take up some space. And that is with a dot, which you probably have already figured out. A point is represented with a dot. And when we label by convention, we label points with capital letters, something like A or B or capital Z or whatever else. So that's that's typically how we label a point. In order to define a point, we just have a point. Then off of a point, we move up to a line. Line is kind of the next level of undefined terms. All right? A line it also takes up no space, but it is infinite in two different directions. Right, so it is something like this. I'm going to kind of put a bit of a line here. We draw arrows at the end to represent a line. Now, how many points does it take to define a line? It takes two points. Two points define a line. It, it, we can define a line with just two points. And how do we label points? We label points with capital letters. So like this could be line C, D. Now we also, excuse me, we also <coughs> can define a line with a lowercase cursive letter. So like this might be line M, 
and we use a lowercase cursive letter to define this entire line, right? And we usually label it something like that. So you have to have at least two points to define a line, but we can also label our lines with lowercase cursive letters, right? Makes sense so far? The line doesn't take up any space. We represent it with a line on paper, but it doesn't actually have any depth to it, right? That's And that's important conceptually to understand, but practically speaking, a line is a line, right? Undefined terms, right? And the last type of undefined term that we're talking about in this video is the plane. Plane. We draw a picture of a plane, usually with something like a quadrilateral, which we'll talk about much in great detail later in this course. So you usually draw a plane something like this, right? And in order to define a plane, how many points does it take? Well, it takes at least three points to define a plane. Okay, so this might be, if we have some points on here, we might have this one, and we can label this with X. We use capital letters to define I in planes. This might be point Y, or the, and this might be point Z. And so we could define this as, we have to write this one out. Um, oh, I didn't, I forgot, online. The symbol to describe this line, so we could we could write this as one of two ways over here. We could say this is line M, right? Or we could just say M if in, in context. That kind of depends, right? We could say M. We could, and we also can define this as line C D. And this is how this works. What we do is we put C and D, and then we define it as a line by drawing a little line on top of it. So we say this right here, line C, D. That makes sense? All right, now there's no, for a plane, this is this is kind of where, where we went, in, or I went in, in my brain. I was about to write down the symbol for this. So there's no little arrow symbol for a plane. Um, I've seen some people do it with a quadrilateral, uh, but later on when we actually define quadrilaterals, usually you you use a little little quadrilateral symbol to say quadrilateral blankety blank 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 blank, right? Um, and so I don't like to do that one that way. Um, again, I'm all about the symbols in geometry. We're going to use the heck out of those. But for planes, I usually just write out the full word. So in this case, it would be plane. X, Y, Z. Now, we use lowercase cursive letters to define a plane. You also will sometimes see lowercase, excuse me, uppercase cursive letters to define a plane. So like we might have something like plane P, right? as well you you might see something like that now and we it's sometimes that can be tricky i don't do that very often either because sometimes it can get confusing right because is that a cursive p or is that some weird alien shape or whatever else is it a capital or is it just a really big lowercase and all of these things now usually you can tell in context what we're talking about and of course if you're ever confused in, in a video you can put in the comments uh, or if you're one of my classes, you can you can use our class Discord server or whatever else. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Or you can ask me in class and and all of those things. Um, and so there's there's that. But it's kind of the whatever clarity is is useful. So let's kind of look at an example you might see in a textbook that's kind of using some of this information. It's actually kind of several examples thrown into one. Right, so we might have a figure like this guy over here, right? We might have have something like that, and then some various questions that to, that uh, we get asked about this figure. So if we're looking at this figure and we're ask and we're looking at this example one, right? Then it says how many planes appear in this figure? Well, let's see if we can figure this out. There's this big one, right? This big one, this one, and this one we could define a bunch of different ways. We could say this is plain EFG, plain LHJ, plain 
uh, G, L, E, etc., right? Because there are several different points depicted on this plane, you could actually define it several different ways. So that's one. Now this bottom sort of hexagon, that's on the same plane, right? And so that wouldn't be another one. So that's still just one, right? Let's see, let me let me uh, do a little color and, and color and labeling. Let me let me say this is this question is going to be red. So one, this is not one, but this one is two. This little side one right here. This little front triangle would be another one. That would be another plane because we've got a plane here, and then we've got another plane. And coming to the side, it's hard to tell on, on video, but if I kind of hold my hands like that, those would be two different planes, right? They're not on the same flat surface, right? And so there's another plane here at front. Oops. The number that comes after two is three, right? And then this one would be another one, so that'd be four. And then back here, we've got five and we've got six. So it looks to me like there are six total planes in this picture. And grab a different color. So, for example, two. I'm going to use a yellow color. Name three points that are collinear. So that's one of our first definitions that we're talking about in this class. We're going to get a lot of them. There are two different words. This this class, and you know, if you're probably like most people and coming from Algebra 1 straight to this class, you're going to find this this class is a whole different ball of wax. There is much more writing, and it's much more definition and vocabulary heavy, and there's just a lot of, of knowledge to gain. And so we're going to be writing a lot of definitions over the course, course of this course, right? So collinear, we'll go ahead and define collinear and coplanar. Um, those are easy definitions, and they're easy because they're what they sound like they are. So collinear, linear is two or more points on the same line. Makes sense, right? Some of these definitions are going to be easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Some of them will be a more complicated. Now, I don't know if you heard with what I said out loud a second ago, but our second definition that we're going to have is coplanar. Planar. Which is what it sounds like. Two or more. Points, lines, shapes. I'm going to put points with a little ellipsis. I'll, I'll show you what I'm going to put. Two or more points with a dot, dot, dot beside it. If you want to write out more details in your notes, it's not a terrible idea. Um, with two or more points or lines or shapes that are on the same plane. Oh, planar. Uh, for the bulk of bulk of geometry after this, for not quite all, because we do some three dimensional stuff. But for the bulk of geometry, we will be dealing with shapes and things that are exclusively coplanar. For most of this course, we're going to be looking at just a single plane, basically the plane of the page that you're looking at, and <coughs> excuse me, and uh, dealing with shapes that are coplanar, right? So going back to this, this question, name three points that are collinear. So we've got two points here on this line. We've got two points on that one, two points on that one, two points. Oh, look, there they are. There are three points that are on the same line here on this edge over here. So J, K, and D are all collinear, right? So, for example, three, we'll use this pink color. Name the intersection of plane HDJ with plane X. Okay, so we got this big plane X, right, with this big, with this capital X right here. So this big one and then plane HDJ. So let's see if we can find that plane. So that is HD, HDG. Now, I keep saying J, but G is what it is. So that's this plane. Right, and so we kind of, if we were to kind of extend that out a little bit, sort of, kind of, 
it would kind of come here. And the intersection of those two planes, the inner, and this is important because this is a this is a axiom that uh, we're talking. We'll kind of build from undefined terms to axiom slash postulates that they're those two words are synonymous up to theorems, and and we'll kind of learn continue to learn more and more about that over the course of the course. But the intersections of two planes, if we have two planes, it's, it's, it, then they intersect. It's hard to see with that. I should have grabbed a couple of pieces of paper or something. But, but if we have two planes, they intersect. So we've got two planes that are my hands. You can kind of see it sort of. There we go. Now it's in focus. And now it's uh, on camera. There we go. <laughs> and so the intersection, so this intersection is a line, this line right here. So planes intersect at a line and the line that they intersect at here is line hg which i didn't quite draw but kind of close this line right here so that would be line h g remember we we symbolize that that way. So we'd say that line HG, which I've said like five times at this point. So I think you got it, right? I hope so. If you're totally confused, let me know in the comments or in class or on our Discord server or whatever else, all those kind of things. Last question, we'll do this pretty, pretty green color. At what point do lines LM and line EF intersect? So we see that on question three, two planes intersected a line, and we see we can infer the truth of the statement that two lines intersect at a point, right? So line LM, where is that line? Well, that's this guy, right? That's this one. And then line EF, well, that's this guy over here. Line EF is on this plane X, but this line over here, like if we were to, it's hard to see in three dimensional because it looks like they intersect, but they don't because this point right here would be on this plane out here, but this line here is going straight through. So they don't is the answer here. They don't actually intersect. Okay. So that is the undefined terms of geometry, <coughs> excuse me, um, and they are point, line, and plane, and everything that we learn about after this video is going to build on that foundation of point, line, and plane, and it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger with more and more shapes and more and more true statements and all kinds of things and lots of proofs and lots of writing. It's going to be a grand and glorious time. If you're one of my students, I'll see you in class. Don't forget to do your homework and all of those things. If you're not one of my students, thanks for joining us. And like I said at the beginning, we would love if you hit that like button, the subscribe button, and, and let us know in the comments how we can help you out more. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.